Why sharks nudge their prey, office buildings, and present value tables? This is Ken Boyd with the Accounting Accidentally Substack page. So it's called a bump and bite attacks. Sharks often nudge and bump their prey before attacking, and they do this to find out if the prey is alive or dead and how quickly the prey might try to escape. And real estate investors have had to take a similar approach with office buildings. Investors are poking around trying to find out ways to drive rental revenue from office buildings. You probably remember the ancient times when we all drove home from home to a separate building to work. Well, not so much anymore. According to the National Association of Realtors, office vacancy rates in February of 24 have hit 13.7%. So if you own a commercial building, you need to nudge and poke around for more revenue sources. So this post explains how investors are thinking about office buildings and how present value tables are used in financial analysis. So why not convert an office space into a home? Converting office buildings into retail property. According to Morningstar, older office buildings still need to drop about 50% in price to make turning a former workplace into homes feasible for the developer. So Goldman Sachs, it's quoted in the article, defines what non-viable, what a non non-viable office building is. It's an office building that must be in a suburban area or central business district, built before 1990, not renovated since 2000, and has a vacancy rate above 30%. This means that, if current, that current office prices would need to fall enough so that the cost is covered fully by a stream of discounted future revenues. And I've added italics and bold on discounted future revenues. So let's dig into that. How much are cash payments really worth? Okay, say you convert an office building in residential apartments and a family signs a 10 year, 3000 month lease. Now that's a long lease term, but it works for my example. How much are those payments, those rental payments worth in today's dollars? And the answer is important because dollars received in future years are worth less due to inflation. And inflation is defined as the overall increase in retail prices over time. We all know this grocery prices, car prices, and other products and services go up in price from one year to the next. This chart, if you want to cl click through the link, shows the annual inflation rate for the past 90 years, if you're into that sort of thing. And if you look at the average, let's assume a 4% inflation rate, just as an average, using present value tables. What we need to calculate is the present value of an ordinary annuity. And an annuity is a series of payments received over time, assuming the same dollar amount each time, paid in the same date each time. To make this easier, let's assume 10 annual payments of 36,000, which is the $3,600 monthly rental payment times 12, paid on the same day each year. If you go to a present value table link, you'll see that the present value factor for 5% and 10 years is 7.72. What we do is take 36,000 times 7.72, 20, dollars Now you'll note that that present value amount is less than if we simply multiplied payments times years to get to 360,000. So the question is why? It's because inflation reduces the value of the payments in future years. What about some other examples? Here are two examples where you can apply the present value of future payments. How about selling a business? It's common for a business owner to receive a series of payments after a sale rather than collecting the entire sale price up front. This makes it easier for the buyer to cash flow the purchase. So the business owner may get payments over five years, 10 years into the future. Another example is royalties. Royalties on music and books generate a stream of future payments. In both cases, it's important to know the present value of the future payments in order to assess the true value. So the lesson here is discount the value of payments received in future years into today's dollars using an inflation rate. This calculation tells you the current value of the series of payments. So that's as far as we'll get right now. And if you'd like more information on accounting and finance, you can go to accounting accidentally as substack. Thanks.